right, welcome back everybody. We, we are standing outside talking about how many layers we are wearing to combat this freezing cold, but we're also admiring the view. The sun has started breaking through the clouds and I think you're now going to get a great, great perspective of what we're talking about here. 64 antennas that are making up the Meerkat, which is basically uh, part of the SKA, which is an incredible initiative that uh, I think is headquartered, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to get all the information. I've got the minister that's going to be talking to me in a short while, but it's uh, it's sending information that we've never, ever been able to pick up ever in this uh, global universe of ours that have got so many secrets and answers that are out there that are now going to be discovered. And it's thanks to these incredible, incredible machines that are we are surrounded by. Now, we were telling you a bit earlier, it hasn't been the easiest broadcast because there is, uh, you are not allowed to have any cell phone signal. There's no networks here. The, the machinery is so sensitive that any kind of satellite will actually interfere with the work that it's doing and that's what's been the huge challenge. Well joining us now is the Minister and the Minister of course I am sure is very very excited about a day like today. So our Science and Technology Minister Mamaloko Kubai Ngobane, welcome and what a great day it is for you to be firstly in this position and to wake up and have to officially launch the Meerkat. Definitely very exciting. Um, you know with the team we've really had to work through the detail and everything just to make sure that we, there's no nothing goes wrong today because it's not only a significant day for South Africa but for the international community so we're working with partners uh, across the globe so everybody's excited for us and together with us because it's about partnership so it's a it's a it's an I, I'm not so sure how to explain it it's a very exciting day for yeah, us yeah, yeah. you know a lot of people look at us and think guys you're standing next to like this big thing and you're so excited I mean what is the big deal the DG kind of explained it to us and I think he did a very very good job in explaining that discoveries are going to be made now things are going to be found out that have never been able to have been seen before because there's never been such power and I think that's probably a simple way of describing it but perhaps in your words you can even tell us why it is so momentous it is as well for our children for the future imagine I mean we didn't have this previously now scientists young children who are growing up will be ac actually excited to become scientists because there's observatory that they can do they can observe um, the universe they can go back I mean with today's children who are interested in in technology they have now an opportunity not to go outside the country but to be within their shores to be able to research to be able to understand the origins of the universe this is about learning, this is about development, but an opportunity for those who want to become. So it's an opportunity for our children. But secondly, for us as a country to be able to contribute to the global community in terms of research and development, for knowledge, I mean, it's huge to be able to understand, because we're saying in the science world, you've got to understand the universe to understand. Well, unfortunately, we lost the feed there at Tuli and out in Carnarvon. And it's a very exciting moment. And as you could see there in that shot, uh, the sun was just starting to uh, peep through. And uh, we're going to go back there because uh, we seem to have re-established that connection. So Leanne, standing by with Minister Mamuloko Kubai and Gubane. That's, that's good news. Yeah. You know, I think we, we uh, it sounded like we dropped our um, we dropped our feed for a little bit, but we're back on air now. So we just missed a little bit of what you were saying. But I think the crux of it is really the investment into the future. And, and also you touched on the fact of where this is keeping South Africa on a level of science. And, and we're becoming one of the, a very respected nation when it comes to science on a global level. I mean, you're telling me how busy you are in terms of traveling around the world, uh, showcasing and sharing what it is we are finding here in South Africa and I suppose it is it's quite interesting one would never really think that as a scientific destination South Africa is making such a huge mark 
No, we are. I mean, for this Karu now, we're contributing both in terms of research and development, but in tourism, because most of the scientists are going to come here. Be those who never thought that South Africa existed, they will be here. But secondly, with our expertise in creating high computer science um, centers, we are helping many of our African countries. I mean, recently we were in SADC, and most of the SADC countries were in South Africa help us um, in, in this work. And because of the expertise that we've been able to build with Utah in these facilities through the building of this facility because some of our guys and some of our scientists they might have had exposure but this project gave them the opportunity to sharpen their skills this opportunity it was an opportunity for them to develop more of their capabilities because now they they had an opportunity to have scientists coming from outside to come and work we've had over time in south africa a lot of our researchers and scientists going abroad not coming in and that is a bit of a worry for me and now this ska and meerkat project gives us an opportunity to have more scientists coming in because when they come in they're able to give you feedback and say based on your capability based on your research capacity based on your institutions and your your mach, mach, machinery this is where you're lacking compared to others instead of ours contributing to other countries now we're having an opportunity to have more i was here on site a month ago when i was we were lo almost looking at the preparations and i found one of the researchers from the u.s and i asked him well, would you have come to south africa would if it was not he said no i didn't even for example know south africa existed wow until this project came in. Well, that, that, I mean, that tells you a lot. But I, I suppose a lot of people also sitting and looking and, 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 and we are a price-sensitive country when it comes to money. And this, this doesn't come at a cheap price. I think, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong on the price tag, we're looking at a total cost of about $4.4 billion. Is that correct? Yeah, it's about 3.2 that 3. we've spent, 3.2 billion that okay. we've been able to set aside. Yeah. Worth it? But I mean, people ask, why? Is it worth it? It is worth it. Um, one, because if you look at the investment, yes, we're contributing that amount, but the money that comes from partner countries, you, EU, for example, has put almost about, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I'll, I'll have to check my figures. It's almost about 1.5. 1 billion euros as part of contributing. China is also contributing. So it's not only a project of South Africa that we're contributing. On the continent, no one else is able to do this. No one else is able to research in terms of astronomy. The facility doesn't exist. Actually, globally, we had to compete with a number of countries. It's South Africa and Australia. Yeah. Now, we're competing with developed countries in terms of research and development. One of the things I say, Leanne, when people ask if investment generally in science and technology is worth it, and my answer is that for you to develop a country, look at China. China is competing with U.S. in becoming number one economy. And you look at the investment they make in research and development in science and technology. It's 2.5 of their GDP. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they are able to compete. So you have to invest in research and development and innovation. World Bank said to us last year, South Africa, for you to get out of your economic problems, you need to invest more in innovation because that's the only way you are going to be able to compete. So this is part of that. Science and technology and the investment we're making here is to be able to grow our economy, contribute to the knowledge economy of this country. Mm -hmm. And when we do this, it's not only about science only. As I said, there's tourism, there's local economic development that we've created. I mean, who would have been? We wouldn't have been in Carnarvon had it not been SKA now. The tourism industry is booming because of this project. So you contribute holistically to a, a development in an area that it would never have found life in an economic econo uh, economic development. Yeah. All right, Minister, we have to leave it there. Good luck for today. Enjoy it. It's a massive occasion for the country. It's a date, I think, that will be remembered for scientists around the world and uh, uh, the contribution that South Africa, the small country on the tip of Africa, is going to make uh, to the universe and for the future generations is going to be immense. And I think that that's something we need to learn out of today. Minister, thank you very, very much for joining us our uh, minister of science and technology mamaloko kubai and gubane talking to us here on site uh, just outside of Carnarvon, about 80 kilometers at the meerkat it's a big launch today and uh, thanks to the department of science and technology we were able to bring this to you live at home let's take a break we'll see you after this